Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with Ezra chapter 3. And I guess you could call this another one of those boring chapters. You're reading about how a bunch of people are helping to rebuild Jerusalem at the time, at the end of the Babylonian captivity. So just for an example, I'm going to read verses 13 and 14 out of Ezra chapter 3. Hanun and the inhabitants of Zenoa repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the refuse gate. Melchijah, the son of Rechab, leader of the district of Beth Hakarem, repaired the refuse gate. He built it and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. And it just goes on like that for many, 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 many verses. It's a rather large chapter, and it just outlines the duties of what various Israelis did to build up the wall. And the purpose of this is simply to remind us that we all have our parts to play. We're not always the director or the leader. We may not always be like, you know, we're not Nehemiah. We may not be the guy who gets a book of the Bible named after him, but what if you're one of the guys that, you know, helps build the wall? What if you're one of the guys that helps restore some of the buildings? What if you're someone who, you know, hangs the bars or put lays down the foundation? Every single part is important, not just the not just the um huge red letter guys who have their names and headlines, and who was the king's cupbearer, and who was the, uh, you know, the descendant of a certain high priest or whatnot. Even the guys who simply laid the foundation, you know, stood guard over the work to make sure it was done. Every single one is important. So if you want to serve God, and if you want to follow Him, be content where you're at. There may or may not be opportunities to move up. There may or may not be opportunities to. You know, get into the limelight, get you know ultra popular, or get incredibly rich. Maybe it's just enough money to you know live on. Maybe it's just enough to make sure that the bills are paid, food's on the table, the kids aren't hungry. Maybe it's just that. But if you're working and you're serving God and His kingdom in any capacity, please don't forget that what you're doing is important. And God, the one who rewards all of us or punishes all of us at the end of our lives. He's got his eye on you, and if you're working for him, if you're doing his work and what he's called you to do, you can rest assured your reward's not going anywhere. And if you and if you have enough to make sure that you and your family are clothed, sheltered, eating and drinking, then you're good. You're in good shape. Don't despise yourself or despise those around you or your family because everything's not, you know, in the top, most brightest, most glorious position imaginable. Every single one of us count. Every part of the body of Christ is important, both those that are displayed for the whole of the world to see and the parts that are hidden away, the parts that uh, seem to have a bit less honor. They're also important. 1 Corinthians 12 talks a bit about that. So for now, that's the message I got from this chapter. Once again, some really good, solid stuff from a chapter that eh, could overall seem pretty boring. But there's a message there if you're willing to look, and if you're willing to see, and if you're willing to hear. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.